and welcome to Liverpool. And I'm stood outside Liverpool Lime Street, which is the city's mainline terminus station. There's been a station here since 1836, which makes it the oldest still operating Grand Terminus station anywhere in the world. What we see now are two parallel twin arched train sheds, the northern one being constructed in 1867 and the southern one joining it in 1879. And I'm here because today I'm going to go to Chester twice. Once with Transport for Wales and then again with Mersey Rail. I've still got a day on my Northwest Ranger, so this is the kind of daft thing people like me do before we head home to Devon. Just inside the southern train shed, Tom Murphy's playful sculpture imagines Ken Dodd bumping into much-loved campaigning local MP Bessie Braddock. Ken is brandishing his tickling stick, but I've no idea why Bessie appears to be holding an egg. The red and white pillars where the two train shed roofs meet are a delight, as is the majestic curve that they form. Of course, most people would think first of the Avanti West Coast trains that link the station with London. But for now, I'm going to be riding a brace of TFW Class 153s. The Class 153s were originally built during 1987 and 1988 by Leyland Bus in Workington as two-car Class 155s, and then they were converted in 1991 into single-car units. So, before we jump on, let's have a look at our first route of the day. On this route, we'll leave Lime Street southeasterly along the main line to London through Liverpool Parkway over the River Mersey at Runcorn, and then we'll swing back southwesterly through Frodsham and Helsby before arriving into Chester. This route is 43 kilometres or 27 miles long, and it will take our Class 153s 46 minutes to complete the journey. As you'd expect, the 153s feel pretty dated, but at least the TFW refurb in red and grey cheers up the interior, and of course it helps that today is sunny. And soon we're pulling out of Lime Street, heading into the tunnels. Beyond Edge Hill, we leave the old Liverpool and Manchester line and continue to head south. Liverpool South Parkway has been built on the site of the old Allerton station and it was opened in 2006. Mersey Rail, Transport for Wales and a number of mainline services stop here to connect with buses that provide the link to the airport. As the line for Widnes and Warrington heads off left, we keep right for Runcorn. And soon we are coming upon the highlight of the ride. The train will cross the River Mersey and the Manchester Ship Canal on the wrought iron Lattice Gerda railway bridge dating from 1868. Whilst we will also gaze upon the sweep of the 1961 Silver Jubilee Road Bridge. And just beyond the bridge we pull into Runcorn Station, which opened in 1869, no doubt because the bridge was just built. Beyond Runcorn it's time to leave the electrified main line to London and swing back southwest to Chester along the newly reopened Halton Curve. On the map, this curve, which enables us to join the Chester to Warrington line, looks pretty tight, and the squealing from the wheels confirms that's the case. And at Frodsham Junction, the squealing can finally cease, and we can pass over the River Weaver navigation with a great view of the 1926 Sutton Swing Bridge. As we speed up, with the windows open to provide fresh air on this warm day, our 153s seem really noisy. Mind you, the countryside is very pretty. It's a nice run. Helsby is a really pretty junction station that dates from 1852. This is where the line for Ellesmere Port turns right and we go left for Chester. 
This hourly TFW Liverpool to Chester service was only inaugurated in 2019 after the completion of the upgrade to the Halton Curve. The line is pretty straight and flat here so the train makes good time on this last dash to Chester. Although, right at the end, it looks like we'll have to wait for the platform to come free. And so we're into Chester. Time to have a quick look at the outside of the station before beaming back to Liverpool to do it all again, but this time with Mersey Rail. The station at Chester dates from 1848 and used to be known as Chester General until 1969 when, with the closure of Chester Northgate station, it could revert to its simpler name. And as ever, the barriers do not know what to do with my Northwest Ranger ticket, but eventually I get outside. I've enjoyed a late lunch at the beautifully restored Northwestern pub, which is sited on the lower floors of the old hotel building. But now, let's step out and have a further look at the station. Under the North Arch is a ticket office and travel centre, some shops and cafes and a general waiting area. And whilst I'm here, the East Midlands Railway service for Norwich pulls into the station. This is a true cross-country service which will take nearly five and a half hours to cut across England. Quite a trek. Well, I've had a nice time hanging about on uh, Liverpool Lime Street Station, enjoying this architecture and uh, having a drink and uh, something to eat in the weather spoons. Huge weather spoons. Lovely what they've done to the place there. Um, right, so next job is to get to Chester on Mersey Rail. So it's time to go down there and down to platform A and see how Mersey Rail compares to the Transport for Wales route. See you back at Chester. It's time to leave the 158 to its own devices on platform 8. We have a train of our own to catch. But before we go down to platform A, let's have a look at our second route of the day. The first thing to note is that Mersey Rail trains coming in from the Wirral do a one-way loop around the four stations within the city and then head off back out. So, our train to Chester has actually originated at Chester. So once we've completed the loop and crossed under the Mersey onto the Wirral, the train will swing southbound to Chester and, as you can see, there are too many stops to mention. Our 777 no doubt accelerates faster than the 153s I was on earlier, but even though this route is 10 miles shorter, with all those stops, the journey will take roughly the same amount of time. Right, let's go down to platform A and see what we can find. This passage takes us out under Lime Street and then a right turn and we are into the Mersey Rail Concourse, which features ticketing facilities and a large yellow penguin, which is part of the Go Penguins public art installation. And then down we go again to the single platform. I'm timing the journey so I can be sure I'm travelling on one of the new Class 777s. Trains come fast and regular down here as all the branches loop through the city. And first up are two trains made up of the ageing Class 507 units. These old units are now life expired and do not provide the comfort and the level boarding of the new 77s which will eventually replace them all. And here's our 777, all decked out in the Eurovision colours and there's that wonderful level boarding in action. The train isn't busy yet, but I still make the daft error of taking the seat that is behind all that Eurovision window marking. Duh. Anyway, I shall move. That's better. And as you might expect, Liverpool Central is where most of the crowds join the train for the trip under the Mersey. The somewhat defunct platform at Liverpool James Street looks to have some nice artwork along its length, though it is a bit gloomy to see it properly. And Hamilton Square marks our entry onto the Wirral at Birkenhead. 
and now we're out of the underground section our 777 feels a lot more like an ordinary train and it's really busy right now which is great to see As the name suggests, Rock Ferry is a place where there used to be a ferry from here to Liverpool, which was first recorded in 1709 and which ceased in 1939. Port Sunlight is a famous garden village developed between 1899 and 1914 by Lever Brothers to house workers at its new soap making plant. To this day, Unilever still has a major factory at the site. The stations come and go and it definitely feels like with each one, things are getting just a little bit more rural. Rombra looks really pretty in the afternoon sun. At Hooton, trains for Ellesmere Port will turn east, but we will now continue south through Cheshire on to Chester. It has been too busy on the train to really point the camera around the interior, but it does feel new and, considering how hard these commuter-style seats are, they are quite adequate for the role they are being given. And it's great to see just how busy these Mersey Rail trains are. They're being used as they should be as a really effective mass transit system. And so we pull into Chester from the west side into platform 7, which I believe is in fact the only platform at the station that is fitted with third rail electric. There it is, my class 777 that brought me up from Liverpool. And it was quiet, it was smooth, it was comfortable, fairly comfortable, fairly hard seats, but it is a commuter train. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, that's the way you'd go if you lived in Chester. There's uh, one of these every 15 minutes and you probably don't then really have to worry about the timetable too much, just rock up when you finish work in Liverpool and get the first one home kind of thing. TFW, a bit noisy, wasn't it? But the route, going across over the bridge at Runcorn certainly had its own uh, own charms as well so I enjoyed both rides uh, but yes I suppose if you live here you'd be getting the Mersey Rail most of the time anyway uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed this comparison between the two routes between Liverpool and Chester and if you did give it a like and uh, maybe subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because I release one of these uh, train or travel videos every Friday and sometimes a little extra one on a Monday who knows but yes in the meantime uh, from uh, Chester here on a, a very pleasant September afternoon I must say it's goodbye and thank you very much for watching